Hello friends. Well, um, as I said, uh, I'm going to do a series of blogs. Um, most of these blogs really are just as a reminder to myself of what I was doing in this particular week. So although this you could class as episode number one, it's more a, a week ending um, and today being the 27th of February and a Sunday, um, I'm going to call it episode one, weekend in 27th of February 2022. Um, as I sort of sp spoke about in the intro beforehand, I like a discussion and I'm trying to better myself, get out of the doldrums. Um, there's a lot of things going on in my life that you will discover with me and I just feel that maybe talking about some of the things that I've been doing um, might aid you guys into doing some more searches maybe into other areas or even taking an interest into something else. So um, it's been an interesting week. Um, for me at work it's been just another normal week but I am heading into a discussion in regards to where my job is going. Um, some people know, um, some people don't, that um, I, I'm, a, I'm a civil servant. I work for the Ministry of Justice. Um, I've been tupid over now into the main group, which is the Ministry of Justice, rather than being um, the probation service that I worked for for eight years. Um, and during that time, I've escalated myself into a manager's position but like anybody that needs to be tupid into a bigger group, you're sort of under threat in regards to keeping your authority. Um, I don't know the programs that they use. Um, they don't know everything that I've been doing um, for the last two years, um, which has been a major change for just about everybody with the pandemic. Um, so they're, they're not aware really of the amount of hours that I lost um, just doing work off of my own time to make sure that everybody had a laptop or PC to work with during the pandemic. So some resentment can come into these things. I, I try to keep it um, low down on that. But I do tend to find that with a lack of friendship other than online um, and with a elderly mother that I care for um, I can't speak about the things that I'm enthusiastic about I can't really talk about the things that are disturbing me or or anything so that can have a bearing on your mental health um, this is where I tend to find that having all your eggs in one basket is not great uh, just just uh, coming home and doing some things that make you happy and doing things at work um, is not enough you need to be able to get out walk meet people do all the things that a normal person should have and especially if a person doesn't have a, a partner like me so I'm a singular person so I do hope that people that I know um, take some of that into hand and move forward. So what we had in the news, um, so I listen to the news quite regularly because I have to travel to work and it's a half hour drive and a half hour drive back. So I've been listening an awful lot about uh, the Croatian Russian situation, um, which has escalated again even today. I believe um, the European Union has got together and held a conference today. Um, Russia has extended its um, grip hold on Ukraine by uh, blowing up certain gas lines to other major cities. Um, there is targeting accusations for against the actual people and not military bases or uh, areas of strategic um, positivity in regards to the Russians. What I will say about the whole of this incident is 
it's absolutely atrocious. Um, needs to be condoned. My government in England, I don't think, is doing enough. Um, there is going to be bloodshed, and it's going to escalate into thousands. And if it goes to an all-out war, far greater than that. So, the thing that's sad about it all is not only is this happening right now in the 21st century. Um, it, it's happening just as we come out of a global pandemic which has affected us all. Here we were all separated, not able to go anywhere. And as England and the rest of the world start to relax some of the conditions that we've had to live under, we now segregate ourselves by a war it's it's so infuriating and but what we must be thinking at the moment is how those people how those people are now being affected war is war and it must be terrible for all these people to now seek shelters in undergrounds it, it, it to be quite honest like i it makes my blood boil just even talking about it but next week we'll have even more news on this um i'd love to hear what your thoughts are in regards to relaxing the pandemic and then these poor people that are now in a war um it, an interesting uh, point to come across so um what else has been happening um let's let's start with some of my other things that i like to do um I'm a big collector. I'm a collector of music. I'm a collector of um, computer games. I'm a collector of anything to do with technology, um, music, films, um, just about everything. Funnily enough, it seems to be everything that's expensive. <clears throat> so, um, even though I've had a comic collection since I was five, um, and I've continued it through most of my life you too tend to, tend to find that you're buying things again um, things go round in circles and in some cases people will be buying it for the first time other people will be buying these reprints to maintain the quality of the of the book that they bought a book that was bought in 1962 is now going to be in pretty rough condition unless it was maintained, kept, um, protected. So there have been some interesting um, things happening this week. So Hatchet Park Works, as they always do every year, try to expand their Marvel and DC lines. Um, a book that came out. Um, last week was The Amazing Spider-Man New Ways to Die, a new set of 100 hatchet part works. Now, I bought the first set of Marvel graphic novels, which are still going now, six to seven years later. They have not finished it. It started off as a 100 set. It is now closer to 250. And they've released two other series, series since then and one of them I think has ended uh, quite rightly um, because it was just reprinting other books that wouldn't be in that first line more solo work and now they're releasing a legendary collection to be quite honest it's double treble dipping um, I bought the first one because it's £1.99 yay I mean £1.99 won't buy your pint just so that you know years to come one ninety nine, you can't get a pint of lager um, so it's an interesting book um, for £1.99 it's a great read give it to your kids um, it's a character Spider-Man which I've been collecting for years he's my main character I'll talk about that particular aspect of things later on um, and it has some interesting things in it it's not only is it a collection of books which collects issues 568 to 573 it also has the story behind where Marvel was 
in this particular arc but also some artwork some unreleased pages um, the covers of each of those books if you bought them in individual uh, format so one pound ninety nine, great. The next one is out this week. I think it's seven ninety nine. Um, I believe it's an Avengers book. Um, from then on, issue three onwards, it's at the full price of eleven ninety nine. <coughs> Rip off. Um, so my opinion of it is, if you haven't got these books, by all means buy them. But one hundred times eleven ninety nine, you do the math. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you'd need to be. Uh, a pretty good collector um, if you wanted to buy those particular books they're also going to get harder to buy at news agents unless you subscribe so another reason to possibly have a think about that before you go any further now I'm into as well omnibus books now omnibus books are big tombs of books they are collections um, some of the collections are collections of particular artists, some are collections of particular writers. Some of them go back to the Silver Age, which is the 1960s, um, and start from issue one and go in volumes. This particular book is X-Men Omnibus Volume 1, with a beautiful Alex Ross cover. And it collects the X-Men... Uh, from issues 1 to 31 and has a price of a hundred dollars now anybody who buys these omnibus books knows if, if you pre-order or even if you wait until they are officially out that price is halved um, I managed to get this book from Amazon it was 51 pounds 99 pence uh, which for 31 comics in a tomb is pretty good and if your intention is to buy the other volumes so that you've got a complete collection of the X-Men, um, absolutely fantastic. Some people might buy it just purely because they want to read the very, very early stories. These early stories uh, were mostly by Stanley uh, and various artists. This particular artist is Jack Kirby. Got great respect for Jack Kirby, um, although not my favourite artist. Um, his artistic style made everything stand out. It, um, action just looked fantastic. There is positions and, uh, that you, I could actually talk about in fighting that actually is more realistic. Uh, he makes even a dramatic page stand out just by doing something um, slight by moving your hand forward like this makes everything look menacing just by putting a hand forward wherever artists would just keep their arms down um, a fantastic book uh, because I don't need to open this even to know what these stories are I will be reading this this week I will be opening it up that's the whole intent of me buying an omnibus is not to keep it as it's supposed to be it's to read for God's sake some people that are slabbing these books please take into consideration you can't read that book anymore um, you will be preserving the value and if it's to flip a book that's fine if you know you can read it in another way that's fine but once you slab it up you can't read it its whole use was for it to be read just take all those things into consideration um, when buying uh, comics books omnibuses and collections so that's that out of the way so, what else have I been buying? Oh my God, well, anybody who knows me knows that I'm into my films. It's been a bit of a slow week, to be quite honest, in regards to new films coming out. Um, but I do collect steel books. Now, if anybody knows anything about steel books, um, they're another tier for you to buy physical media where the media is encased in a steel case. Um, so this week I've bought Captain America The Winter Soldier Mondo Edition Steelbook. Um, they're not too expensive just because of the word Mondo. What you have to understand about Steelbooks is, is that they come in um, a normal version and then there are the small companies like Pop Art and Mondo and, and so forth. Variants is what I used to, is what I call them. Where the artwork is tweaked. Um, 
and there's something something else to consider you know when when, when you want to um, buy these things this particular one is a Marvel one so basically um, it was a it was a must buy the next one is the Kingsman uh, this is the new Kingsman with Ralph Fiennes um, yep yeah, you can find this on streaming services um, but I did quite like the cover quite stands out um, it's not going to show too much with the glossy cover still on it um, but it is a gloss cover rather than a matte cover um, no embossed work on this one just a nice little one to go in my collection because I do have some of the other King's Men films. And then my next collection is the Mad Max Anthology 4K Steelbook collection. Now this has taken an absolute age for me to get um, because in America when it was released they found that the audio was broken on the third film which is Thunderdome. Um, Mad Max has got a little bit of a well, quite a bit of a following but from, from my point of view um, I discovered Mad Max with the second film um, I always remember um, going to my friends to watch it the first time and seeing the you know the apocalyptic future um, and there was always the scene uh, where um, there was a big big car chase and there's a a small child with razor boomerangs and uh, this person this little lad threw the boomerang and um, one of the adults thought I can collect that held out his hand his fingers were chopped off um, just a little word of warning be um, very careful with sharp objects um, is this worth a collect, collect, collecting um, yes if you're big into your films like me, like I say, I, I buy steel books. Um, as a collection, it comes in a steel tin all the way around, and each of the collection is actually in a steel book with its own artwork. Um, not cheap. Um, might be worth a pick up a little bit later on if the price does drop. What I tend to find with these special edition tins, because they're so expensive, there is a limited run. So when you're trying to buy these later on, you will tend to find you'll be buying eBay prices. There will not be anywhere for you to buy these. They will be sold out. So one to look out for is Mad Max. I can talk about Mad Max probably all day. This is just to tell you what I bought this week for the future. The only other steel book I bought was actually a game. So it's Total War. Warhammer 3 in a steel book. Now you tend to find that there isn't much to buy these days when it comes to physical media for your PC. It is all Steam related, you know the client Steam or good old games or Epic or any of those types of um, services. So I'm a big Total War fan, I like strategy. Um, this one is the third in the series. It's had a good review. It's now patched, um, a day one patch. I believe it was a very good quality when it came out. So the patches are just some stabilization and uh, some changes to the unit's uh, power. So a bit more balanced. Um, I will go into games in every blog I ever do mostly it will be retro related you know all the things about the Commodore 64 Spectrum you know uh, Atari's and Amiga's so I will talk about the games that I played if I ever do get around to doing them that week um, but this particular one is in a bit of an anomaly you don't get physical media much with PCs so look out for that if you want um, it was cheap when I ordered this as a steel book, it was thirty nine ninety nine. If you go to Steam, you will now see that it's fifty pounds, just as digital. So I got it really at a bargain. Um, can't complain about that. Now this is a bit of an oldie. Um, this is really more 
um, in line with Panther, uh, a good friend of mine, and what I listen to. So when I, I go for a walk every day, um, minimum of two miles at the weekend, five miles on a Saturday and five miles on a Sunday, which I'm just about to do, which is why I've got my coat on. Um, and around about this time, he will probably have a video out and it will be his Sid versions uh, in stereo of well-known games from well-known musicians of the time. Um, this is one of my favourites in the collection, which is Marcel Dan's Project Synology. I can't big this one up enough when it comes to my listening pleasure and reminiscing about the retro scene. Um, I love the retro scene. Music was a big part of it. I would sometimes load up games just to listen to the music, as many of my friends would do as well. Um, what this is, is sort of those game musics done by our favourite musicians, but they've been characterised as Jean-Michel Jarre type work um, and some Vangelis. Now, what that basically means is, is that you can definitely hear the game tune, but it's mixed with a sort of a backbeat or sections of famous Vangelis or Jean-Michel Jarre parts. It's a bit difficult to explain, but it, it's a merger of a sort. Um, and because it's not Sid totally, they are in the instruments of our era. So they are top quality. So bear that in mind if you're thinking of going to C64 Audio to get these. Um, because if you're looking for something like what Panther does, which is the actual SID and not manipulated other than to make it in stereo and to clean it up slightly, these are a, another variant. Um, but depending on your musical taste, they're sharper and clearer and they're in the instruments that we just wish the Commodore 64 could have done back in the 80s. I mean, just think about it. If you could have had the sound that you'd buy on a CD of a Jean-Michel Jarre track like, a track like Rendezvous, Houston and so forth, and that was coming out of your Commodore 64, you'd be going, wow, and there would be no war uh, between classes. So I can't ha heartily recommend this. It's not only got the CDs, you also get the digital copies, but there is also a lovingly made DVD which is in um, surround sound. So absolutely fantastic. I think you can still just about get it. Um, definitely worth a purchase digitally or in physical media like I have done. And then when it comes to retro this week, when it comes to retro this week, sorry camera, get back into focus please. Bloody typical, isn't it? There we go. I've been looking back at what I'm going to be listening to this week and on top of listening to some of my friends um, casting on YouTube and ripping the audio out so I can listen to something when I'm walking, which are people like Main Meister, um, Down the Rabbit Hole, Panther and so forth, um, I do go back to my old music collection. Um, I pulled this out the other week, my War of the Worlds Collector Edition, uh, which, as you can see, possibly there is a seven-disc deluxe collecting package, which I bought many, many years ago. Um, I will be listening to those. I will be ripping them, putting them onto my phone, putting in my Samsung earbuds, and going for my five-mile walk, listening to Ula and everything else that comes with War of the Worlds. Um, you won't be able to probably buy this anymore. Uh, this, this, this deluxe package is basically a fantastic set and was bought a decade and a half ago. So, but when it comes to your musical taste, I'd like to hear what your musical taste is. Um, Jeff Wayne um, did lots of adverts, lots of um, TV um, title tunes for the World Cup and so forth. Um, 
I was given my War of the Worlds double album vinyl, which I still got in 1977, 1978. Uh, I was very young, under 10 <coughs> at the time. I listened to it to death. I still listen to it now. I've been to the live show. Um, so War of the Worlds is something that I am very familiar with. Not many people are familiar with his second work, which was Spartacus, uh, done in the same sort of style. I think it was Anthony Hopkins that was the narrator, where it's uh, Mr. Burton that does the narration of the original War of the Worlds. Um, but that's a little bit of history for Jeff Wayne and my War of the Worlds love. So... Maybe you can explain a little bit about um, what your likes are. So that's the end. About 25 minutes. I, I didn't want to go too far. It's it's episode one. I'm about to go on my walk. But I do wish everybody well. Big shout out to um, Panther and Mainmeister and um, Kev down the rabbit hole. Um, and a big shout out as well to Ox who's helped me out no end this week. He knows how he's helped me out. One of the big things I like about Discord and the people that I've met online is they do offer you alternative ways to keep your collection together. He's been a big help this week in giving me another outlet to keep my collection prime. So thank you, Ox. Um, and uh, there'll be another one, I dare say, week ending next week where I'll explain a few things. Plus, I'll probably go into a little bit more depth into... Uh, what my likes are and uh, uh, some of my other collections so thank you very much and hope to see you again in the next one bye bye bye